So what time is it is such a simple question, but like a lot of simple questions, when you dig into the details, you'll be amazed at just how complicated it can be. I'm sure that when I ask you, you might just pull out your watch or your cell phone and you might tell me that it's 12 noon. If we were in Philadelphia and I asked you, you would still say 12 o'clock. Same thing if we were in Pittsburgh. But is it really 12 o'clock in Western, Central, and Eastern Pennsylvania all at the same time? Not really, but to make our lives simple, we have agreed that in big bands on the Earth called time zones, we would all set our clocks to the same time. If you really want to know when it's noon, you want to know when the sun is exactly due south from your position. If you want to use astronomers' terminology for this, we call this transiting the meridian. So the meridian is an imaginary line that stretches from due south, goes directly overhead, and ends due north. So true noon, which we call solar noon, happens each day when the sun is on your meridian. The thing is, if you measured that with a sundial like this one, you would find that solar noon according to the sundial might happen at 12.13, 11.58, or even 107 on your watch. So what's going on? Well, after you account for the hour of daylight savings time, there will still be a difference of 13 minutes between our clocks on the sundial. The second correction is the time zone correction. We here in State College are not in the middle of our time zone, but we set our clocks to the same time they do. So when the sun is on their meridian, it is still about 11 and a half minutes until it will be on our meridian. So this is the longitude correction, and we will always be off from solar noon with our sundial by the same 11 and a half minutes each day. Still though, we have one last problem to sort out. There's still about a minute and a half difference. Well, this one made the biggest surprise of them all. If you take one day as being the time the Earth rotates around one time, you would expect that the time from noon on one day to noon on the next day is always one day, or 24 hours long. Well, it isn't. Sometimes it takes a little longer than 24 hours for the sun to be on the meridian, and sometimes a little bit less than 24 hours. So over the course of the year, sometimes the sundial will run slow and sometimes run fast compared to a clock. You can draw a shape called an analemma that shows where the sun will be on the sky exactly 24 hours later each day from one day to the next. This effect can be up to roughly 15 minutes of time different from noon each day. During spring, it's only a minute and a half, but on February 6th, solar noon by the sundial occurred at 1.25 p.m. on our clocks. It's real simple, though now we've got to figure out something to do about those leap years. For Penn State, I'm astronomer Chris Palma.